welcome back to sunny Kent. Hello all new subscribers, there's a good few of you now. So if you guys don't know, this is a, a homemade container kiln. Well actually two containers, powered by one heat source. The Eco Angus hot air burner, supplied by Ember Air Limited. We are currently going through some modifications with a uh, basically an extractor fan in the kiln to reduce how much humid air is inside the kiln. So that's gonna be coming uh, possibly this video or the next video. But this video is mainly gonna be servicing, somewhat servicing the boiler or the burner. Um, so you can get these in boiler form, so a wet system. So it heats up water, uh, like a water jacket around and and then um and then you can then move that either around your house or your workshop or put it to a heat exchanger and blow it into a kiln or you can go for these hot air burners um that just pump out hot air um have these two centrifugal fans on the back on this unit you have two and that basically sucks fresh air in round the what used to be a water jacket and then out the duct work you can either heat up um, workshop, workspaces, buildings, uh, greenhouses, or in my case, a kiln. So I'm gonna be basically somewhat servicing the burner today. Um, I'm gonna to give the whole burner room a bit of a clean up. And there is heat exchanger tubes in the back here where it keeps the fresh air from the exhaust air from the fire. So I'm gonna clean them tubes out and then I'm gonna clean the bottom chamber out because it's stone cold at the moment so you do have to do it when it's cold. Um, and I can see sales really picking up in the next few weeks. So likelihood is of having the time to turn it off and clean it out in the next, well, few months really. Uh, it's gonna be pretty tight. We are currently, I think it's the ninth, it is the 8th of October. So the likelihood is I will turn this off around Christmas and I'll give it another service then. Um, you know, two, two, two and a half months is absolutely fine. Uh, but it does really increase the efficiency and also I suppose how much fuel you use because if, you're, if you've got a very clean unit, the heat from the the burner and the gasification is going directly to the metal and then directly to the air that is going into your kiln. So if you're interested in this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and you can watch me and Woody service the Eco Angus hot air burner supplied by Ember Air Limited. So we'll make a start by just getting all these bits, I thought they could fit through the door they can't so I'll take them outside and I have to chainsaw them up or split them up the reason why I have to chainsaw them up I think is because they're just huge knots uh, the reason I can't make this into firewood is because it just won't make a nice stick of firewood uh, that's softwood um, do you know what I mean so there's big big knots so uh, the likelihood is I'll just have to chainsaw it up and then they can go through the burner and they'll make a fantastic heat source uh, I do have my new Karcher Ashvac so I'll be demonstrating that, cleaning out all the bottom. But we do have to give this place a bit of a clean up and then I can get round the back and clean out the heat exchanger tubes.
So you will have to excuse the noise. The light switch is wired into the extractor fan. So that takes any smoke out of the burner room when you open the top chamber. Works really, really well. Right, to start off with, probably gonna put you on the head cam, but you need to just take off these two Phillips head screws, one there and one there, and then you slide it back and it, cups, it comes off these little, um, little kind of holding nuts. I'll show you when it comes off. But there's just two Phillip head screws, take them off and then that top panel can come off. Okay, so like I said, you've got to slide it back and then it pops off. This is what I mean by the little holding nuts. And they just lock into here. Now what you do is take off these 13 millimeter bolts, take all them off, and then this top plate will come out. Get the airline done. It's not too heavy, but it is a steel plate. That's it. Okay, so it is quite built up. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be wearing a face mask, get a really good sealed face mask, uh, kind of a high-end one, because this small fly ash is so fine, it can get into the air very easily. So I'll be wearing a face mask, and I'll have the camera on my head, and you can watch me uh, suck all this stuff out. Really good face mask by 3M. take it off so that that releases any ash in the filter it's getting quite full Ow. Do you see what I mean? This is why I'm wearing a mask. Hopefully you can see that.
instructions you have to press this while it's on and that clears the filters so you press this three times with four or five seconds between and it uh, clears the filter out but you have to have it running so it's the motor's got warm it will turn on again when the motor cools down so in the meantime because it was sucking out a lot of stuff down there in the meantime we're going to start rodding these out what i do is i start at one end and just work my way across these back ones are actually pretty Back ones are pretty. So, where's the back ones? Now if I find it super compact in there, I actually use a solid rod first to, to make the hole. So do that first. I'll do that all along these ones because they're bad. knuckles make sure you go all the way down it's just a bit of a nightmare This ash is just so fine, I think it blocks up the filters quite quickly, so you can press that and it cleans the filters out. could take off this bottom bottom panel and clean it out from under there but I took it off once and it was a nightmare to put back on uh, 
so it's just as easy to suck it out. But that really is looking, I mean, you could go back and look at the the frame when we first opened up the plate, it was uh, really bad. So what I will do is I'll open the flaps up and clean up around the flaps. Um, but all these tubes are looking nice and clean now. I'm gonna get the, the brush and clean up all the fans around the back here. This isn't a legit service. You have to get uh, Embraer Limited to come out and do your service to continue the warranty. But I like to do this, do this every two to four months, depending on kind of what waste I'm burning and how often I'm using it. I mean, if you're running it constantly throughout the winter, then I like to do it every couple of months if I can. Keeps the efficiency up, reduces how much uh, fuel you're using and it's just healthy for the burner. There's quite a bit of dust build up inside the fans here. So I am going to try and get the compressor around here and I'm gonna compress these fans, being very careful of the fins, but I'm gonna try and compress all the dust out them fans because they won't be taking in as much as uh, they need. Um, we've obviously knocked everything down from the back down to the, the bottom now. I'm gonna clean out the top chamber and give that hoover out. Just work your way down. You can see now right at the back, hang on a minute, see right at the back that is full up so these fire bricks they take a beating really from all that gasification they will break up but if you if you can kind of just place them back together they'll do their job absolutely fine mine are pretty broken up now so I am going to scrape around as much as I can with the the uh, with the metal scraper after that I'm going to go in there with the hoover and I'm going to reach right down to the bottom and get it all clean but I'm not going to take out the bricks because they're likely going to fall apart even more. So see another really good advantage of having the hoover is you can just reach down there as long as you get right round the back of the bricks uh, you're going to be fine. I'm going to scrape, scrape the ceiling, scrape the walls, do a really good job of it and it will pay it will pay for itself you know um, we're going to shovel out all what we can and then we'll hoover out the rest scrape the sides try and get any creosote off scrape round the uh, the panels there at the back but it's it's in pretty good pretty good nick this can get built up in the corner here uh, in the corners it can be built up and then you struggle to shut the door so just keep all that clean all the time keep the seals clean this might need a new seal I'm going to get Embraer out to do a full service on it uh, very soon so um, right we'll do the top chamber before I go and get the compressor I'll give this a bit of a go Not quite good at it. Right. Scrap like this. So what I do is I try and push as much as I can from the front to the back, keep scraping against the back, and then I use uh, the dustpan bit uh, of dustpan and brush, and I then come in to the front and try and scrape out as much as I can before I use the hoover.
getting so warm in there now my camera's overheating. Um, right, I'm gonna clean out the bottom. Uh, you've seen me do that before, scrape it out and then I'll, and then I'll hoover it out. And then uh, I'm gonna see if I can bring, I might bring the leaf blower around here because it's a bit more accessible than the compressor. Blow the fans out, blow the back fans out. We'll put the plate back on and uh, we'll then get her lit. Start pumping out some hot air to the kilns. So you've seen me doing this before. I put a tray at the door. Hoovering out. That's how much we got out. Full tray full. all cleaned out nice we're gonna put that top plate back on okay We better leave that five minutes, I think. And then we'll get the air burner on. Right, guys, you've seen me light the uh, burner before. If not, then go back to another video. This was more cleaning the burner. This video has probably got quite long now. So, Make sure you stay tuned, watch the next video where uh, the burner will be lit and we'll have the first batch in kiln two with the new modifications. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.